All right, in this video, I want to cover the tool setup. When we start programming from the prints later on in this series of videos, um, each print will have a tool list of the tools we're going to use for that particular part. We're going to use the tool setup screen to determine or describe what part or what tool that is, the speeds and feeds that will be associated with that tool when we use it in the program, and also give it some information on the characteristics of that particular tool. So to do that, we want to go to the tool setup screen, and there's two ways to get there. Number one, and the way we would do it on the machine typically, is we're going to hit the input button. We're going to go over and hit tool review, and then select tool setup. That takes us into the tool setup page. Then we simply highlight the tool number, type in the tool number that we're going to be entering. In this case, I'm going to do tool 50. Tool 50 did not exist. Now I have created tool number 50. I'm going to determine what type it is. I can pull down this menu and go to end mill. Or you'll notice whenever I'm on any kind of field that has this pull down arrow next to it, we have the same selections here in our eight um, soft keys along the side of the, the screen with a more button here where I can toggle through to more selections. So sometimes using these um, soft keys on the side of the screen are easier when you're at the, at the machine. If you're on the desktop, the mouse works pretty well and you can click on the pull down menu and then go select the type of tool it is. Either way that works for you, um, either one of them is correct. So now I can hit the input or the enter button. The diameter, let's say this is a 0.5 end mill. The tool calibrated length will be set at the machine. We don't have to put anything in here for graphics to work on the desktop unit. Um, once we teach this tool at the machine, obviously that's going to be necessary before we can run it. But for anything we do in class, this really is unnecessary. We leave that at zero. As I continue to hit the input, or I'm sorry, the enter button, it'll take me through the other fields for speeds and feeds. Now, we have a field here for speed, that's direct RPM, and a couple down from there we have the feed field, which would be for inches per minute or millimeters per minute, depending on what, what units this particular program is going to be in. So I could enter in a direct RPM and feed rate, or I could put a surface speed here under surface speed, the number of are the feed per flute and the number of flutes, and then it would calculate the speed, RPM, and the feed rate. So if I like to program, if I'm old school and I like to program in direct RPM and inches per minute, I can do that. If I'm a little um, more familiar with today's technology and I want to program in surface footage with chip load, I can do that as well. So if I go here to surface speed and I put 800, and I say I'm going to go five thousandths chip load or five thousandths per revolution and the number of flutes, then you'll see that it calculated, I can tell that by the CAL next to it, it's a calculated value, calculated the RPM, calculated the feed rate. Had I typed in the RPM and the feed rate, it would have calculated the surface footage and chip load based on the number of flutes that I have entered. So two different ways to put in the same information depending on how you like to program and what kind of information you're used to using. Because when we do graphics, we have a solid model rendering of the part, if we choose to look at it as a solid model, we need to be able to accurately describe our tool so whatever it cuts on our graphics looks like what it's going to on the machine. The way we do that is we hit this little more with an arrow button down here at our F7 location and we go to advanced tool settings. Now the advanced tool settings depending on what type of tool it is may show up something different. Here we have a simple end mill and as I highlight each individual field it's going to show me what information it's asking for. Here's the length of cut, the length of the tool itself, the diameter, how many flutes, things like that. If I were to change the type to be a chamfer mill, for example, you can see that that graphic changed. Again, though, as I highlight each individual field, it's going to show me what information is being asked for. For example, here it's asking for the chamfer angle 
per side on a drill that would be included for the angle of the tip of the tool. So that's how we're going to go about creating the tools that we're going to use for any program that we're going to write. We would start out by putting all the tools in ahead of time and then we would simply call those tools into the program as we need them and our speeds and feeds and things like that would automatically be set for us.